I think, yeah, there we go. Yeah, sorry. Hi, Carlotta. Nice to see you. I am so happy to see you. I've missed you. I know, me too. Your hair is now down to your knees because of COVID, I understand. <laughs> I know, I have not had a haircut since January, so. Well, you're lucky you have so many, so much hair. You know, as we get older, <laughs> it changes. That part of our- uh, How did I know? Yeah, so I, um, you know, in the beginning, I just introduced myself for anybody that's new and then Jordan does and then you do, but I have so many questions and so excited to catch up because I love uh, Carlotta. Carlotta, I think, is one of the best people I know in this industry, and she does a lot to help brands um, get on the map. So my name is Shari Leidick. I am the founder and CEO of No Brainer Foods. I'm also the founder of Two Moms in the Raw, which was created of my need to heal multiple sclerosis. And now we are making ketogenic creamers and instants, but I have to say more importantly, Max Sweets, which is taking over the planet. And it is a functional zero sweet, uh, zero sugar uh, sweets that we are um, just really excited about. So Jordan, do you wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, and Carlana, it's, it's awesome to meet you. I've heard fantastic things about you, but um, just to give quick background. So I was diagnosed with celiac disease my freshman year of college. And ever since then, I've kind of been on this quest to find uh, gluten-free products that taste just as good as something that I previously had never had to worry about eating uh, growing up. And through that, I've just become absolutely obsessed with the Better For You CPG world. So found Sherry after she won the best product award at um, Expo um, and tracked her down and basically convinced her to take a shot on me helping out with the the day-to-day -day of things. So that's where we are today. And it's awesome. To, it's a great to chat with you today. Yeah, we're attracting amazing people. So I'm Carlotta, all about, yeah, please introduce yourself. Yes, well, first I will say thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, last night I was watching your interview with Alan from Scratch Labs and I just feel so honored to, to be in conversation. He's such an amazing guy, isn't he? So, he's so nice. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've loved what he's been doing and I just, love his approach and 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 so anyway it just made me feel extra honored to be part of this conversation today and so nice to meet you Jordan. I am Carlotta Mast. I am the market leader and SVP of content at New Hope Network. Um, so New Hope puts on the natural product expos and we this year have shifted to virtual events and we do a lot of digital content and research content marketing all in the natural and organic space. So I love this industry. I work very closely through the Naturally Boulder, Naturally Network. I'm uh, just actually transitioned off the board after six and a half years. No way. Actually, yeah, I, I, uh, I termed out, Sherry. I, well, you've done, you did the most important job. You built that into such an amazing thing. But Aaron is doing a phenomenal job and you work so closely with him. Yeah, so I, but I just, it's just another way to be able to work with, with, um, companies in this space, brands. I, I, uh, part of the, the Climate Collaborative Advisory Board, part of the JEDI. I was a, I'm a co-founder of the JEDI Collaborative. So I try to find any opportunity I can to give back to this industry and support an industry that I truly believe has the opportunity to change the world for the better. So I just feel so- Well, you, you're this way on your way, uh, Carlotta. And if it wasn't for you guys, No Brainer wouldn't have, had, wouldn't have seen the trajectory that we've seen because of your shows and what we were able to win at the shows. And my question for you, because these are short and sweet, right? So we get right to the, my question for you is, there is a strong DTC approach, right? A direct to consumer, um, angle for brands, especially emerging brands, even established brands, right? They're kind of switching gears. And I'm wondering how the expos and what you can do to sort of help support that. Like how do these virtual, virtual shows, and I'm sure we'll be in person one day, but how do we maximize these shows so that the TTC is not lost? Uh, I think it's a great question, Sherry, and I, I, I've been really glad to see brands be able to leverage DTC, especially um, early stage brands, because I think that's where it's such an amazing environment to learn, to learn about your, your customer and your target consumer base, to, yeah. to, you know, to work out some of the kinks in your business. It's, um, it's a great way to, to also, um, 
you know, make the, the revenue that you need to be successful in retail later on. So it's been great to see brands start in D DTC, learn, and then have a more strategic approach to their retail um, and distribution strategies. So I, I love seeing that. And, and for us, one of the ways we've been leaning in to support brands um, as they are looking to be direct to consumer is to build out our influencer network so we have a network oh, of, of more than 500 health and wellness influencers who we've, we've gotten to know and we've vetted and, and believe that they are really credible influencers in this space because we're not, as um, our influencer team always says, we're not, our industry isn't selling flip-flops. We're selling food and wellness products that you put in your body and on your body. And it's important um, Influencers are such a powerful way to reach a consumer segment. They have their trusted, their own trusted audiences, but you need to be able to feel very confident that you can trust the influencers that you are working with as they are um, educating their audiences. So that's what we've been working on in building this influencer network and then getting creative in ways that we can help brands connect with the right influencers as they're building out their direct to consumer approach and, and, and working with those consumer influencers as part of that, um, building that part of their business. That's, that's so smart. And, you know, as Jordan and I keep learning and um, figuring things out and, and amplifying our DTC, we are learning how important influencers are, especially today, right? Especially on social. So my question, my next question then to still as an, an add on is that a lot of times new brands are being discovered at these shows. I know two moms in the raw, you know, we met um, Howard Schultz there, right? Like within our second year and then the third year we were in every Starbucks, um, thanks to West, Expo West. Um, so what about these emerging brands and accessing what you offer? Because it's not like people are just walking down the aisles, perusing, and then, oh, that's interesting. Like, how, it, how is it happening so that this emerging brand can get on the map and, and enjoy all the benefits that we were, we've been able to? Yes, I mean, and that's that one of the things we, we definitely as an industry lost some this year is that um, the product discovery and those serendipitous connections that happen when we convene as right. a community and, and so, as I was noting, we've leaned in very heavily to virtual events. We have our Spark Change virtual events um, product discovery. I love that, yeah. Platform. And, you know, it's, it's just a new way of interacting. And I think it's going yeah. to require um, learning and behavior change on both the brand side, as well as the buyer side, the community side. And so... We had some great learnings ourselves um, this year from what we executed with Spark Change in terms of what's working, but also how do we make it so much easier for the brands to really tell their story in a virtual setting, make those one-on-one -on -one connections with buyers and others in the community, um, th similarly to how they would in person, but actually leverage the power of, of digital to be able to do that in maybe an even more effective way um, we know that we're, we know physical events will, will come back there. We are certainly as humans missing that, that oh, physical. Absolutely. And, and we also know that they'll look very different um, as we get back to, to being in person. It will be 20 again. feet apart. So like, yeah. <laughs> I, was gonna say, I, I need, I need to go to one, I need to go to one of these events. It's just crazy. I feel like I live and breathe this category and I've never like stepped foot in one of these events. It's just crazy. I can't believe we didn't meet. Yeah. I would have loved to have you at one of our trade show booths, Jordan. It would have been amazing. Yeah. It will happen again though. No, it will I'm certainly happen not. again for sure. And I, I think yeah, one of the things, I mean, I, I imagine that, like in, in terms of sampling, I know like typically you probably go to an expo and you walk around and you taste a lot of different things. Right. And I think that's something that I've been thinking about a lot in terms of this digital world. Um, and I, like our website now, we sell bundles of six, but what if someone wants to try it for the first time without having to order some kind of surplus of them? Um, and I'm curious kind of how you think of how emerging brands and just frankly, D 2 C focused brands can allow their consumers to try something without making them purchase a larger sum, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Sampling is the uh, another thing that yeah, we really leaned really in, into this year and, and learned a lot. You know, sampling um, 
it, it has to be executed correctly. So we were focused on how do we get um, uh, help our brands get their samples into the hands of retailers and other buyers in a way that um, is meets the retailers needs because our retailers and buyers this year also were completely disrupted by COVID and, and the priorities in their businesses changed. I mean, they needed to keep their stores open, their, their employees and shoppers safe, um, the products on the shelf, product discovery was um, at least early on not as prioritized for retailers, but now they're getting back into wanting that product discovery. And so um, we learned a lot about sampling and it, it remains a really important component of our virtual offerings. Beyond that, we've had a, a partner called Sampler. I think Carlotta froze for me. Oh, she's frozen. Well, I'm going to continue. That's what I meant. I knew she was going to talk about Sampler, um, which I'm wondering how we can, can access our own with web. Oh, there you are. You know what, Carlotta, you phased out a little. They get feedback. Kate, Kate you, oh, you froze for a second, and Here's I just jumped down. in and saying, Sampler, I agree that that's a great program, but for an emerging brand who already has a website, um, to, to have to now will and pay for a marketing um, partner to so do you have any other suggestions or do you think that is the best approach is to use the, the ones that are sort of um, have that audience I guess I guess you're right in a way because they do have that link right to the consumer well and and the fulfillment side can be I mean it can just really take a lot of a, a, a small brands time and attention yeah. um, and and so if you're not able to do it yourself, a, a third party partner can be can be really helpful because they, you know, and, and, and through like our type of sampling program, we have the retail buyer audience, you know, built into who we can reach. And then we work with a fulfillment partner like Sampler to be able to actually um, efficiently execute on these programs. But, you know, it's also a place where I think brands can get scrappy as they need to and figure out how they how they can get into the hands of more more you know especially their target consumers and it's important and what i like about samplers you're getting the feedback back about yes. what people liked about the product you know what they didn't like you know that is especially crucial in those early days as you are still um, refining and revising your offering yeah based on that consumer you feedback know, it's so it's so true. And um, before Jordan came on and we started the bundling, which was so brilliant, um, we were, we did purposefully have single items that people could buy as opposed to Amazon where they had to buy a group of three. And for me, that was the sampling that went on. But the truth is, you know, out of the, let's say a hundred bags that went out, maybe you get a comments on 25 of them, right? If somebody took the time, even though we asked for the feedback with sampler you do get the feedback so you know you're you are correct because we've done it both ways yeah um, what are you so learning that is, I, mean, that is I you know i know you're interviewing me but i i what i've been doing is i've just been in listening mode with brands and retailers this year because everybody's world has shifted dramatically and and i don't believe it will return to the way it was pre-covid and i don't think no. in some ways we even want it to so like what's a big a big lesson you've learned in terms of how you are changing your approach um, in response to the pandemic. So historically, and I think you know this because you know us and our brands and, and Carlotta was one of our first uh, loyal customers from the beginning when we just had the creamers and um, is that, you know, our marketing dollars, we only spent marketing dollars on trade shows. That's it. And the two trade shows we use, we went to were Expo West and Expo East. We also went to Nosh which we won uh, the show, um, but we were, um, and that was an exception and I'm really glad we went. Um, but literally we have put zero marketing dollars towards anything else historically, just to let you know. Um, the way this is shifting, and I think a lot of it has to do with Jordan joining our team and explaining the importance of ads and certain marketing dollars spend in targeting consumers, is that we've never spent more than, I don't want to, I mean, it's embarrassing, Jordan, but I don't think we ever spent more than $15 a month. He no. can't believe more, how well we're doing with just, yeah. So we've never spent more than $15 a month on um, any kind of dollar spend on ads, Carl Carlotta. And that's including Amazon. So we've done zero marketing. And now that we don't have your trade shows, 
Um, you know, and you know, so so what we've done is we have now decided to make a focus to DTC and support it. Uh -huh. And so we have uh, built out a team of, of new new people, like recently graduated. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they are eager, they're excited, and they're teaching me as much as um, learning on the job, and that's okay with me. Um, and so that's big, the biggest shift. The other shift that's happening is it's really hard, at least in Boulder, Colorado, to, to keep a uh, robust staff in our kitchen. You know, we've kind of slimmed it down to about five people, whereas before, you know, people are either on receiving unemployment or they're scared to leave that, you know, there's just so many things. So building that infrastructure has been, a, has been a little more difficult. So we're, we're constantly on our ops team, but we now have a dedicated, you know, four or five people in ops. Um, so that's also been um, a learning, a learning curve. So, I mean, great question, you know, because, you know, I mean, I don't, did you know that, that the only time we spent money was going to your shows? <laughs> I, I don't know if you know that, that, but it's, you know, it's something that I think a lot of brands, you know, in, into, I, I really appreciate that, obviously, and, and uh, um, it's been- Well, it's not only because I love you, but um, there was a lot well, of- Well, but it, it's, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's been a good way for, for brands to get in front of retailers and in front of the community, but, you know, the world is evolving and we- we are evolving with the world. And I think this whole direct to consumer approach is, is a huge part of that, a very important part of that. But um, I also, you know, I still think that there's, there's so much um, value to being, to having the right strategic retail and omni-channel strategy. And, and so I think so wise of you to bring in Jordan and other um, younger consumers, because one of the things I really appreciate about younger consumers and I see this in my own kids is they they truly are you know they say what's important to them and you know health and wellness taking care of the environment um, you know equality all of those things but then they're actually supporting those in their actions as consumers yes. which you know there for a long time people said one thing but maybe did a different thing and so yeah. I'm seeing you know the research is showing something different with younger consumers and so that's that's a benefit for, for everyone. And we have a lot to learn from that. So kudos. You have a lot to, you know, I always that. said that, you, you know, you can have as many questionnaires as you want on your email marketing campaigns, but I, I would say that nine out of 10 times the consumer, even though they think they're answering honestly, their, their, their consumer behavior is quite contrary to what the answer was. It is, I mean, they've done the studies, you know, they like, you know, a robust cup of coffee, and you know the most rich, but at the end of the day, they like the bland cup of coffee. You know, because that's what they're buying. And so it's really funny that you said that. But the younger generation, they do put their money where their mouth is. They do. Yeah, it it seems like that. And Jordan, yeah. I don't know if you would agree with that, but yeah, what do somewhat, you think, Jordan? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I definitely think so. I think especially I've seen people are we're at first reluctant to paying a premium for a better product, but now people are willing to. If the product claims that it does something like, the reason I, I love Sherry's line is that it's it's truly functional, right? And the, the modern consumer to me is looking for that next product that is going to do something other than just give them a source of energy and calories after they ingest it, right? They want collagen, they want MCT oil, they want anything else that you could possibly imagine you're you're kind of now seeing this change at least in my opinion about the, the consumer wanting function and being and now willing to pay a premium for that function um point. so that that that's kind of my two cents there um but carlotta I, I i had another question about um kind of the omni-channel approach you were talking about and i, I think there's going to be I don't know when it's going to be. And I really kind of want to hear a little bit more from your expertise about, so a lot of these brands I'm seeing are pivoting to like a digital commerce channel. Like it's, no one's really moving into retail right now. Um, but at some point in the, in the future, I don't know if that's April, June, whenever people actually start normalizing again, I feel like there's going to be this weird like flux period where people and brands are now deciding, do they keep DTC as the focus or do they push into retail? And, I, and I'm curious kind of how you think 
and what you would suggest to an, an emerging brand. I mean, more specifically, like Sherry's br uh, business. What, like, how do you think about that time when you're going to be present potentially moving into retail, and how can we prepare now for that moment when it comes? a good question and I I don't know if I have all the right expertise to answer about exp exactly when you would do that but what you know some of the brands that I see that do omni-channel in a really effective way are the ones who are using again retail strategically and I think retailers have the biggest opportunity and when we can get back into a more normal environment when you're not in and out of the stores and <laughs> as quick a time as possible to really yeah, to create those experiences again. And, and when we come out of this pandemic, I think experiences are going to be more valuable than ever because we've been deprived of those in-person experiences. And so those brands that have that strategic um, retail strategy that really is designed also around the experience that's, that someone can have in a retail, in a retail setting, there's a, a brand, Coconut Cult. Um, and so they have a very strong uh, DTC um, business. They do probiotic yogurts and highly, highly probiotic yogurts. Um, and, you know, very, very high price because they're so functional and effective. But they also, and so they have amazing Instagram content and a direct to consumer strategy, but they also work with retailers, particularly independent natural retailers, to do things like scavenger hunts and to create these experiences in their community that get their, you know, they attract their shopper or their consumer online, often through Instagra Instagram, and then they actually bring that experience out of, out of social media and into the real world in a way that's just really highly creative. It benefits the retailer because it's actually bringing new people into their stores who, who are there specifically to find this brand or this product. Um, and so that's just one idea, but it feels to me that if, if, if you can look at a retail strategy that enables that. And one of the things we at New Hope, because we still, still the vast majority of our industry sales um, happen, um, uh, in brick and mortar, you know, e-commerce has exploded this year for very specific reasons. And a lot of it will stay even in food and beverage, I believe. But those brick and mortar retailers are really, con will continue to be just vital to our industry and to the success of brands. So I think it is really important for, for, for brands to figure out what their, that omni-channel strategy is and what component retail needs to play. And, you know, I think it's going to be thinking in, in bigger, bolder ways and, and maybe even different kinds of partnerships with retailers. That's really interesting. You know, yeah. you made a great point. And a lot of these brick and mortar are, they are pivoting to online, like the Walmarts, mm -hmm. um, the CVS is, CVS is now, you know, you can find us on CVS.com. So they, I think they're, they're paying attention to maybe not the smaller retailers, but they are taking, they are paying attention to the online. And what's interesting, I, I, what I've read, and I, I don't know if you heard this, is that um, Costco has not suffered at all during, <laughs> during COVID. People have no problem going to Costco. I don't know if they think there's this bubble in there that nothing's ever going to happen, but that's an interesting retailer that's figured out how to maintain their uh, footprint. Especially yeah, with such a strong sampling approach there. That's been like something that was incredible yeah. talking to me too. Like how, do, how does Costco like roll out? I mean, I as a kid, I remember my parents would take me to Costco. And like the reason why I knew what Costco was is because I would run around the aisles and like try to get a sample at every one of the places. And it's just like, now you kind of, I feel like maybe go into Costco with more of an ingredient, or more of a list of items that you want to purchase rather than maybe roaming around, you know what I mean? Um, so That's a really good you, made a, you made a really interesting point kind of about um, how much time is spent in retail stores. And um, like Sherry and I were talking about like wh where would Max Mallow be on retail shelves? If you're walking in Whole Foods, like where, where does the product sit? What other products is it next to? And like, in my opinion right now, unless you're like near the apples, near the milk, near the eggs, maybe near the bread, people aren't really like wandering in and out of, and like, I mean, I do, cause I'm crazy about this stuff, but like, it's, 
it's just kind of an interesting little idea here. It is interesting. And we actually, Carlotta, if you pay attention to our uh, social media, work, we are coming out with these minis, uh, these mini mallows, vegan mallows, and I actually spoke to the Whole Foods buyers and they were thinking that that would go great in the baking chip aisle, because that actually is a section that consumers are going to, to the baking. Um, so that, that's, a, that's another tertiary area that people are traveling to. Yeah. Um, and so I there's think so that, much possibility, but it's, it's actually pulling the trigger for the buyer. They are reticent. They're worried about not, pick, you know, not taking care of the staples, as yeah. Jordan just mentioned, for the consumer. And so innovation is not necessarily on their radar. Um, we were really lucky because we got into Walmart to the innovation set, but this was before COVID. And then we got in at COVID time, but they had already had that up and running. I don't think their innovation set, although our, our turns were really positive, the innovation set itself wasn't something that consumers were really going to, but they found us, we're really lucky. So we kind of, um, we proved ourselves, but their, um, you know, all the changes with corporate and their decision-making and seeing that consumers are really going to the staples is just as what Jordan said. Yeah. They're not looking for innovation as much, but they are online, Jordan, which is so interesting, the consumer behavior. You know? mm -hmm. And I think it will, it has to come back, you know, the importance of innovation for um, brick and mortar retailers um, as we come out of the, the pandemic. So if, if brands can be ready for that, and, and what I've heard is that it's been a little, it's been more difficult for brands to innovate this year, as you know, there's been more focus on just keeping their, their primary products uh, manufactured and able to keep those the the supply steady so you know we i think we are going to we are in the this bit of this innovation lull but it won't it won't always be there innovation is really what has fueled this industry and what brings in the new shoppers and the new consumers and even though consumers say one thing and often do another i think that covid has really shown us all and i you you both know this because of how you've used nutrition to heal heal yourselves is that this is a part of our lives that we really truly can control. What we eat, our nutrition, health and wellness. And, and as we come out of this, I truly believe that that will be more of an important focus for, for many, many consumers across many different demographic groups because of the power of nutrition. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, that's such and a power of nutrition. And, and, and it's funny because our innovation is not stopping. We, we, I can't help it. I mean, I just, no, that's one of my things. So, you know, I, I go out of business if right. I wasn't innovating. There's, there's a new function that everyone's talking about every other day now. It's, it's so, um, but, yeah. but look, look, Carlotta, this was so much fun. And we, uh, we always ask one question at the end. Um, and we would love to ask you if you had one more hour. Um, in the day, where would you spend that hour and why? Gosh, and I got a little preview of this from watching your Alan um, interview. And so I was thinking about that, you know, and I, I think I would spend it just, you know, my entire team is working remotely. We haven't been able to be together, you know, the New Hope team. And we've been through a lot of challenge this year, as you can imagine, you know, canceling Expo West the day before it was set to open. And it's been, it's been a tough year for every, everyone and definitely a tough year for our team. So I think I would spend it just checking in with people and having time to connect and, and, um, be together in a way that's not about, you know, all of these new things we're trying to do, but just to be of um, in more connection and support for team members, because that's what I've always loved about our culture at New Hope. And we, we really see ourselves as a family and the industry as our family. And that's only strengthened this year, but I, I believe that that's what will help us as a company get through this challenge and just be even better prepared to serve companies like No Brainer and, and the retailers that we serve in this industry that we love. And you, know, and you have such a beautiful facility in, in Boulder. It's like when you go in, you just feel like you're in this world of uh, like an incubation of, <laughs> of just love. And it's just, it's just wonderful. When you come and visit Jordan, we'll have to, I'll have to drive by there yeah. and you'll see it. And, mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing I just wanted to mention, 
Carlotta, and I, I mean, you can take this out, but I want to say you look so beautiful and glowing, and I feel like you look 10 years younger. I don't know if that's from <laughs> quarantining, and I, I don't know if you have a secret, but you look great. You really do. Uh, maybe being around family a little more yeah. has done it. Thank you, Sherry. You know, I have to say last year I was traveling three or four times a, a month. You know, I was traveling nearly every week and I knew that it wasn't possible. I didn't want to maintain that. And so the universe sort of made me stop and made everyone else stop. And I, I've actually really appreciated that part. Um, so maybe that's it. We also got a puppy. So I think the love that you get <laughs> unconditionally from animals is has really helped all of us, you know, as well. But you look, you both look great at Jordan. This is my first time seeing you, but you know, you look healthy nice. and well, which is the greatest looking things right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. You know, I could be a hermit though. Like I realize I, I don't have to have to leave the house. I don't know if that's a healthy thing, but um, I'm very happy being in my home. So, you know, Sherry, we've um, well, you know what? Thank you so much. Yeah, I know, right? But we definitely have to connect again. Carlotta and I have met, we've gone for dinners around town or lunches, I should say, and we've, we've, we've talked about doing brands together. So let's not lose that connection, Carlotta. I really enjoy spending time with you yes, and I learning feel from same. you. It's amazing. And I, this, is, this is what I was trying, even though we have brands, having someone like Carlotta on here, it's invaluable to emerging brands because oh, sure. she is a font of knowledge. No, absolutely. Yeah. I think I think having founders is is really important, and then having the people that can help the founders is arguably even more important. And I, I hope that when people watch these, they'll kind of get the holistic view of the category. Just because, in my opinion, you kind of have to talk to a lot of people in order to kind of at least begin to figure it out. Um, so that's that's where we are. But Carlotta, thank you so so much again for taking the time. This was awesome. Yeah. Um, and best of luck. And, and I've talked to the team. I think I love that entrepreneurs are cre creating this content for other entrepreneurs. And so I've talked to the team about how do we amplify that? If you're interested, we would love to aggregate this to our sites. We could feature it in our newsletter. So to help oh, you reach please more do. people. Please, please do that. And then the last question I had was if you can offer brands that want to be on here, um, please follow up with an email. Oh, sure. I was thinking about that. I actually had a, a few, so I will email you because um, I love what you're doing. And so, yeah, I think entrepreneurs helping entrepreneurs is really, um, there's so That's much value. value in that. Yeah. And you so. know what? There's, and, and I, you know, when Jordan brings me up, brings a competition to me, like, and I said, we want competition because that validates exactly what we're doing in the space because we are the best of what we're doing. So I have no problem. So yeah, bring it on. And we love to speak to people and we love to help each other and mutually um, up, you know, provide opportunity for one another. So that sounds great. Yes. Well, I will follow up about how we can support um, either with ideas for companies to interview or um, just how we can include your content in, in our content stream for the industry. Great. Oh, perfect. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Bye. See you soon. Good luck. Stay Take well. Care, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.